Hey guys, it's great to be back with you all again. Today we're going to be talking about input output tables. Okay, the specific skill we're going to talk about is 3.5e, and that's to represent real world relationships using number pairs in a table and verbal descriptions. And uh, the I can statement is I can find the rule for input output tables. We'll be working with input output tables today. Um, Look at some of the vocabulary real quick. Uh, with input output tables, uh, we're gonna use it in all four operations, okay? So basically when we're working, looking for the rule, if you remember, uh, it could either be uh, an addition rule, a subtraction rule, a multiplication rule, or a division rule. So um, we need to be uh, familiar with all the vocabulary for all those. Uh, for uh, multiplication, uh, the answer uh, to a multiplication problem is a product, and there's two factors uh, to make the product. And we can switch those factors around and we'll still get the same product. Uh, for division vocabulary, you have a quotient is the answer to a division problem. And a dividend divisor are the two parts. You cannot switch those two around. I cannot say that 5 divided by 40 equals 8. That's not a true statement. So uh, addition vocabulary. Uh, you got add and add in. And the sum is the answer to uh, addition problem. And I can switch, there's a community property of addition, just like community property of multiplication. I can switch the numbers around. I can say one plus four equals five, still a true statement. Okay, but I cannot do the same thing with subtraction. Uh, the difference is the answer to a subtraction problem, and I cannot say that three minus seven equals four. That would not be a true statement. So order matters when we're talking about division, subtraction. Uh, it doesn't necessarily really matter, or I'll still get the same answer. I'll still get the same product if I switch the factors around or I'll still get the same sum if I switch the add-ins around. Uh, got a couple videos. Uh, this is pretty cool. It's a number rocks video. Kind of a, they're putting uh, the steps to um, understanding input output tables to song. And uh, they're talking about the multiplication division uh, rules a lot on that video. And uh, also got uh, Aaron. He's working out one of the star questions uh, from 2016. It's question number 12. And it's uh, over the skill, it's over input output tables, or sometimes they call them number pairs. And uh, on this one, he kind of talks a little bit about the addition and subtraction uh, rules when we're dealing with input output tables. So let's get ready and watch these two videos. We're in a hot air balloon going up to fly The table shows our time and hide in the sky At one minute we're three meters off the ground At two minutes we're six meters up staring down At three minutes we're up nine meters high What's the rule that shows our place in the sky? We multiply any input by three, look at the output. So that's the rule you see. In goes four, out comes 12. In goes five, out comes 15, 12. In goes six, out comes 18. The rule is times three, and the view is pristine. What's happening between the in and the out? We can always find out without any doubt. Between the in and the out, we can educate it, guess, and test it out. I have a function machine, the best you've ever seen. I put in a nine and out came a three. I put in 15 and out came five. Then 27 went in and out came nine. There's only one thing I want to know at this junction. What on earth is my machine's function? If you divide any input by three, you'll get the output. So that's the rule you see. In goes six, out comes two for sure. In goes twelve, and you know what will come for. The simple output table has a rule. It's the by by three. Man, that's pretty cool. What's happening in between the in and the out? We can always find out without any doubt. We can educate it, guess, and test it out. Till you find what the rule is all about. When there are two sets of values and they share a mathematical relationship of functions there And we can use our mind, a mathematical tool, to find and describe the relationship called a rule Yeah. 
the number rock.com for exclusive content, less than materials. And 12 of the 2016 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause this video, work it out on your own. And then when you're done, unpause it. Let's look at our answers together. So our answer is going to be in the number and the form of these tables. And uh, sometimes we'll call these input output tables. And we will be looking for a rule or some kind of pattern to go from your left to your right side. But let's look at our problem. Campers at a lake rented 18 more canoes than paddle boats each week during the five weeks, which table shows the number of canoes and paddle boats. So the only clue we get right here is 18 more canoes than paddle boats. So I'm just going to use C and P. So I'm going to say 18 more canoes. That's my C. Then P. That's my paddle boats. So that's going to be our, our clues. So what we could do is let's just make our own little table to see what we can do. So let's say we start out with um, canoes have got more, so I'm going to put them over here. And then paddle boats have got here. So what if I were to start like this and say I've got zero paddle boats? So if I were to have zero paddle boats, then I would need 18 canoes because I've got 18 more canoes. And then if I had one paddle boat, I've got 19 canoes. So you see when we're going this way, we're going with a plus 18 because we take our paddle boat, we add 18, and then we get to our canoes. Now I did that just because this 18 more canoes than paddle boats, um, it made sense to start that way, but if I were to flip it, what happens if I were to do this? Take my same numbers, 18 and zero, 19 and 1, we can keep going. You notice now we've got a minus 18. So it just kind of depends on which direction we're going, but you get your inverse operations here. These are opposite inverse operations. So looking at our answer selections here, it looks like we've got canoes on the left, paddle boats on the right. So we're going to use this right here. We've already decided we're looking for a minus 18 rule. So Let's see if we can just kind of put this up here, minus 18, see if any of these work out. So let's look at our F. Look at this first row, 72 to 90. Well, 72 minus 18 is not going to be 90. This is actually going to be a plus 18 right here. They're taking 18, they're adding it to the canoes, and they're getting to the paddle boats which, if we're not careful, might look correct. But remember, there's more canoes than paddle boats. But look at all of these numbers. We have to do a comparison here. All of these numbers of canoes are actually less than your paddle boats, and they want your canoes to be more than the paddle boats. So that is not what we need. So we do have, at least on H, we do have our canoes as greater than our paddle boats. So that's a good step right there. And 72 minus 18, does that make 54? Let's see, 72 minus 18. I have to regroup there. So that's going to be 4. It does look like that might be minus 18. Let's test another one just to make sure. Let's do, just pick a random one, 85 and 67. So 85 minus 18, does that make 67? So that's going to be yes. So it looks like H is going to be our answer. But take a look right here. You see this first one right here? 72 minus 18 makes 54. Just the same as right here, but this is why we do multiple ones. Look at the second one. 37 and 72, 61 and 90. These are all messed up now. The G is correct, the first row, but all these other ones are incorrect. They're actually going up. And then 72 and 18, it's way too low. This is minus 1. This is, these, these are smaller, but they're all over the place. They're not following any consistent rule. So our answer is H. Okay, we've got a few um, guided practice problems we're going to work on together. You follow along as I read. It says, 
the number of cakes on different shelves is related to the number of muffins. So my first column is talking about cakes and my next column is talking about muffins. And what we need to find out is which describes the relationship in this table. So would it be A, B, C, or D? Okay, well, let's check that out. Okay, um, we're gonna look at D first. And uh, the reason I wanna look at D first is uh, a lot of times um, that's gonna be one we're gonna try to go to. A lot of times, you know, third grade, we do a lot of multiplication. So uh, we automatically, you know, we wanna multiply. So I'm gonna look at the, uh, look at the first uh, row, uh, or yeah, first row right here. So cupcakes times two, and that is a true. It does six times two does equal 12. Okay, but it's gotta be true on all the data. So I'll check it in the next one. 15 times two. Well, 15 times two is 30. So it does not, it doesn't equal 21. And 23 times two would be 46, not 29. So it cannot be D. So I see it's getting bigger for sure. Okay, there's more muffins than there are um, cupcakes. So we can say that the, there's only other one other um, one other operation that makes things larger is gonna be addition. So let's go ahead and try that out. So cupcakes plus six. So six plus six does equal 12, that's true. 15 plus six, 15 plus six does equal 21. And 23 plus 6 does equal 29. So it does look like that's correct. Uh, I can eliminate these two because it wouldn't be dividing by 2 because that would make it smaller. That means there'd be less muffins than there are cupcakes. And it can't, can't be minus 6 because, uh, like I said, it's getting bigger. So our correct answer was A. Okay, problem number 2. In the table below, the relationship for each pair of numbers is the same. So it's always the same relationship going from row P to row Q. Which number completes the table? Okay, so going from row P to row Q, is it getting bigger or getting smaller? That's right, they're getting smaller. And there's two operations that make things smaller. There's subtraction and there's division. So we'll go ahead and try subtraction, okay? Six minus what equals two? That's right, six minus four equals two. That's a true statement, but it's gotta be true on all of it. What is 12 minus four? That's right, 12 minus four is eight. It is not four. So the relationship cannot be minus four. So it'd have to be a, a division relationship. So let's go and erase that. So what could I divide six by to make it two? That's right, six divided by, divided by three equals two. So what is 12 divided by three? That's right, 12 divided by three is four. That's a true statement. What is 15 divided by three? That's right, 15 divided by three is five. And what is 21 divided by three? Yes, 21 divided by three is seven. So we would pick answer choice J. Okay, it's time again to go and complete your independent practice. Uh, I'll put something, uh, a PDF in there that you can print out and work out the problems on pencil and paper. Uh, but uh, make sure you take your time. Do your very best. Uh, we want to see what you know. This is a review uh, from the beginning of the year. Uh, but, you know, this is good information to let us know uh, if we need to cover stuff a little bit more. So always take your time. Do your very best. Uh, make sure you do the blue puzzle piece uh, with today's date on there. It'll be the very last thing in the folder. And if, you, if something doesn't seem like it's working like it should, or there's a mistake or something, or you don't understand something, you know, please get a hold of your teacher. Uh, let them know uh, that you don't understand something or something doesn't seem like it's working like it should. You can either send them a message 
uh, an email or send them a message in school you, which seems like the most popular way to uh, get a hold of your teacher. Uh, you know, do that, and uh, we'll get back to you just as soon as we can, uh, and uh, we'll get a hold of you and uh, figure out uh, what's uh, what's wrong and or, or fix it for you. Uh, you take your time, do your very best, and best of luck to you.